Welcome back to our Yolo Cometa career mode on Pro Cycling Manager. Today's the day. We start off La Vuelta a España, the first time we do a second Grand Tour in the season. The first time we do La Vuelta, and I'm ready for it. So is Marton Dina, our leader for this race. But I'll go over the roster in a bit, the one we're starting with in this race. But first of all, let's take a look at the most important aspects of this parkour. The 2021 La Vuelta parkour of Real Life as well. We're starting off in Burgos. Yes, exactly where we left off last time. We even have a stage that looks a lot like one we just had in Velta Burgos. But first of all, we start off with a prologue. 7.6 kilometers, and that is plainly flat. So on paper, this is going to be pretty straightforward. On day three, Picon Blanco. Yeah, we did this climb with Ropero the other day. And right now we're going to do it with Dina as our leader. So I'm curious to see what he's going to do on this climb. Day 5, quite important as well because we've got like 170 kilometers of wind zone, which means that we'll have echelons all over. I don't know what to do here. I think that I'll try and play it relatively defensively. We don't have the flat stat on the riders to blow this up, so I'll try and make sure I can actually survive this stage. That is goal number one. If I can try and use the echelons to my advantage and gain a minute here or there on some people, I will certainly try. Tiny hilly finish on stage 6. This is something for Eric Vetter, I think. So I'm curious to see what he can do in his Hungarian shirt. And then we finish off the first episode with the first, I'd say, mountain stage. But the game calls it a hill stage. I don't see it like that. We've got climbs all over and we finish on the Balcon de Alicante. 15% max in the middle there. 7.4% average. 8 kilometers of climbing. That's a bloody mountain, okay? In week two, we start off once again with an echelon section, and that is in La Manga del Mar Menor. And then the day after, another mountain stage, Alto de Velefic, the first proper mountain stage according to the game. 15 kilometers, 7% final climb, so not too insane. Stage 14, we've got the Pico Viacas, which is also a mountain finish. Also not the steepest, this is more a steady grind towards the top for 16 kilometers as well. They after another mountain stage, El Baraco, this does seem more like a transitioning mountain stage and a full-on GC mountain stage in real life, but hey, they can always surprise me. Puerto de Mijares, 20 kilometers at 6%, once again, more of a steady climb, and that's a bit unusual for La Vuelta in my opinion. Stage 17, Lagos de Covadonga, yes, we've got first of all La Collada Lomena, and then once again the same climb, I think, I'm pretty sure, yes, and we finish off with Lagos de Covadonga. 11.2% max, 7.7 average for 12 kilometers. Pretty crazy climb. Day 18, once again, big mountain stage. Alto del Gamoniteru. This is a big one. A really big one. We've got this finishing climb. So, so steep. 17.6 max. Red sections all over for 15 kilometers. 9.7 average. This is going to be a, a deal breaker. The queen stage, I think. Day 20, actually surprisingly a hill stage, but that is because they want to leave the final tone of the Grand Tour, not in a Madrid flat stage at the end, but in a Santiago de Compostela time trial. We've got a hilly time trial of 32 kilometers. This is most likely a very deciding stage as well for GC, unless the gaps are already huge. So yeah, pretty awesome Grand Tour, a lot of mountain stages, more than I remembered at least, and a finish on a time trial. So curious to see what will happen. And very much looking forward to get started with our time trial in Burgos. Roster-wise, we're taking the following riders. Marton Dina as the clear leader for GC. He's got 77 mountain and 75 hill. Now I think he had 73 like two weeks ago. So he must have had a bit of a bum. Secondary still the same though. So that's a bit of a bummer. Would have liked to have a bit more recovery before this Grand Tour. But we'll survive. Second rider on the list, Stefano Aldani. Second Grand Tour for him this season. but. He's basically our main sprinter, so we have to. 24 with 75 sprint, 74 acceleration. Decent hill stats, so could get onto some hills. Erik Vetter, the puncher of the squad, 74, 74 in hill and acceleration. Can also climb a tiny bit with 69 mountains, so can be of proper support. Most likely a lead out as well for Oldani. Ropero is properly our super domestique, 74 mountains, 73 hill. Wait a second, I think he was 73, so he also grew a bit, it seems. Better much payak, we've got some time trial, 73-72, a good flat engine for the team. Garcia is supporting the mountains and hills as well, 67-72 
in Mountain Hill. Sevilla is a leadout slash mountain helper, can do both pretty all round, so that's good. And finally, another climber helper, Arit Saramburu, 69 Mountain, and more talented than we ever expected him to be, so I can't complain. Of course, we start off with that prologue, 7.6 kilometers, relatively flat. In the race, I'll take a look at the start list of the Grand Tour and then decide what our goal should be based on that, because it's impossible to say without knowing who is actually riding La Vuelta here. La Vuelta has begun. We've got Trotnik on the road. We have two riders already finished for us. I think I've found a strategy that works, but first of all, I'll try and pause it and take a look at the start list. First thing I notice, we've got teams with three and five riders, Lotto, Sudel, and Bora. No clue why. It's a bug that we've seen quite a few times on PCM 2021. In general, not the strongest start list, but also not a crazy bad one either. We've got Carapaz here, Lopez, Roglic, Almeida, so... Definitely a lot of candidates for top 5, Yates as well, Thomas, so it's gonna be a big challenge, but I'd like to aim for top 5 still. Next to our GC goal, I'd love to get a few stage wins, perhaps 3 or something, that would be nice for our first Vuelta. Barnabas Peak is on the road, he's riding very strongly, 88 at the moment, and I'm using a strategy that I learned from the comment sections a few episodes ago, because y'all are very great at giving me info, and I like that. The annoying part is that Sometimes the info is a bit inconsistent, so one person says one thing and the other comment says exactly the opposite, and then I basically have to try everything to see which one works, but this is one that does work, like using your red bar as the yellow bar of the past in the prologues does seem to be the strategy you need to go for, and just aim to spend your red in the final kilometer by the time you reach the finish line, like we just did with Peak, we finish 13th, which is a good result knowing the riders that already finished 26 seconds down on current leader Martin Tusfeld. Dina is ready and he's off. With the last rider in our team, we're going on 89 for the start. We're going to try and abuse the uphill section and use it to our advantage because he is better on that. Now, I saw that the AI does tend to spend less energy on the downhill section or at least recover more. So I think I'll try and drop my effort a lot in this upcoming descent to like 70. And hopefully that works out. There we go. And now we'll up it again towards 85. And try and make that to the line. Because I think that's how the AI does it. And hopefully that gives us a better thing. 74 at first time check. Not too great. But it's also not bad. So I'm pretty happy with it. Now I'm curious what's going to happen towards the finish line though. Let's go 86 for a bit. Let's make sure we time it right. 87, 88. Go a bit harder. And make sure we finish like this. And... 72nd on 36 seconds, I'm honestly happy with that. I was expecting some crazy time trial coup by Roglic or something, or Almeida, but they're not doing that great. Perhaps on the line? Let's take a look what Primoz does in the final kilometer. Can he uh, upset the race in Burgos? No, he can't. Almeida then? Don't think so. 28th. We're not that much worse with Dina, which is kind of surprising. Gro Andersen was the favorite before the race started. And he's nowhere near winning this one. I don't know what happened, but this certainly is not what they were expecting. How is Lopez doing much better than Roglic and such? He's got 69 time trial. Look at it. He might win the race. Fourth. Like, this is a very illogical top 10, but hey, I'm welcoming it. It's quite fun that Roglic and Almeida didn't do so great because that benefits us. GCY is the first leader of this La Vuelta is Tobias Foss, Martin Tusfeld in second, and Miss Pedersen in third. GCYs, that means that Lopez and Maz are the two GC riders that are doing the best, both from Movistar, so they're, I was gonna say Trident, but it's not their Trident, their duo is doing very well from the start. When it comes to us, we start off on a decent 36 seconds, 37, and... I'm actually quite happy with that because with Fortunato and the Giro and so forth, we lost about a minute in time trials like this. When it comes to morale, we always kind of skip it in this play for it's because it doesn't have as much influence as it should. And as a consequence, I don't really look after it too much. But I am intrigued by the fact that some riders are fired up by having their first Grand Tour. And then you have Barnabas Peak, who is genuinely nervous about it. So... Would be nice if you had traits or personalities on a rider so that you could kind of see beforehand whether a rider would be nervous doing their first Grand Tour or not. So yeah, I'd love to see that. But 
It also reminds me that we've actually got riders here that are literally doing their first Grand Tour. Like most of the team. That's so awesome to see. Next up, a chance for Aldani because we've got a sprint, but most importantly, we will finally see our national championship shirts because so far, not because we had our time trial and we hadn't raced with Aldani yet since the NC and we haven't done so with Fetter either. So I'd love to see those two NCs. There he is, Erik Fetter, Hungarian national champion, live on the road. It's a bit of a bummer that the lighting makes it so that you can't see the logo properly if he's riding with his head down. If he sits up, you don't have it like right here. Now, Aldani, same story, Italian jersey and uh, very beautiful jersey, honestly. I love it. I love them wearing these shirts. With 11k to go, it looks like Dowsett is catching the last remnants of the breakaway. On the left side, we've got our train moving up, hoping that we can take on the sprint ASAP. Fetter is going to be the lead out for Aldani here. Let's try and make it happen. Yeah, I can start going ham right now with about four kilometers left. Gonna switch towards Sevilla right now. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. Slightly uphill sprint. Bit of a drag. So, gotta keep that in mind. I think we're gonna be fine. Fetter is gonna launch pretty soon though. Right now. From the wheel of Sevilla. Aldani in the wheel. Perfect lead out. But Aldani spending a lot of energy. I don't think we're gonna win this. Clemoso passes us. Yeah. Ooh. We completely explode in the final 500 meters. It's Clément who saw that wins the bloody sprint here. Mark Cavendish in second. We've got Jasper Steven in third and Gaviria in fourth. But disappointment. Rather unexpected winner. But then again, we bottled it. It feels like Aldani was spending way too much energy. So I guess our acceleration or something on Fetcher was too high or flat stat. So that Aldani became a guy in trouble. Kind of surprising. There's one big positive in this stage. is that if Clément who saw can win a stage, everybody can. So... We should be able to win one relatively easily, knowing that this is the kind of ride that I can win in this Vuelta. And so the first big challenge arrives. Picon Blanco, the third stage of this Vuelta. This is a steep but short climb. We saw it last episode on the third stage of the Vuelta Burgos. And now we're going to be doing it with a better climber, Marton Dina. I don't think there's too much else to say. Let's give it a try. And hopefully we settle ourselves nicely in the top 15 somewhere in GC. We've got some attacks before the climb even starts, which is surprising, but I'll just go ahead and keep myself to the front right now. 10 kilometers to go. Two riders up front, Mater and Walter, but they don't have much energy left. Climb's about to start. Let's pause it one second. To my knowledge, this is one of those very narrow climbs. Yes, indeed. So we need to find a way to get Dina a bit more to the front. I will have Fetter protect him right now. I had to... And pause and pause a second. Repair when the wheels take over once Fetcher is done. That seems to be the strategy that we need to apply. Let's go towards 68. This guy can pretty much stop. And we've got our three man, well, team for the last climb. And the climb has begun. We've got attackers from the bottom. That is Hamilton, Gagan Hart, and so forth. Thomas and so forth responding already. I'm going to try and ride a decent tempo actually because I do think that this is a short enough climb. To go pretty mad on from the start. Gigan Hart has understood that and has decided to do it. 85. I want to get to the front before this narrow section a bit. Let's try and get past Serrano. Perfect. We've lost Ropero though. Which I don't like. Let's go back to 77. Konrad and Roglic going ham. Hamilton trying to follow. Yates seems to be, I don't know, second man. But perhaps Hamilton is leading it in for his teammate. Come on Ropero. Get to the wheel again. I'll try and go 85, it's like 5k to go, I can afford it, so let's do it. Ropero is near us as well, so we can take over once Fetter is actually completely done for. Let's try and get past Conrad without trouble. Roglic has a bit of a gap, but I don't really mind. He is a bit above our level anyway. I'll just keep going what we're doing. Four kilometers towards the top. Strong ride so far, but I don't like the fact that Genomator doesn't seem to like us. There we go, we're in the top 10 of the peloton basically. Leading towards the end of this climb. Ooh, pretty much just setting a big gap towards this group. But I'm just trying to hold on and go my own tempo. 86, something like that right now. Looks like Fetcher is done for. So I'll take over with Ropero to help out a tiny bit if possible. Haig seems to be done for when it comes to red. We are not. We're going to try and keep up this tempo on 88 right now. And move up a bit in the final kilometer and a half. Because I think we can move towards the front of this group a tiny bit. Hopefully, 
Let's try and get past Gagan Hard and such. Thomas, Almeida all seem to be done for. Let's go 93. Something like that. 95. We've got half a kilometer to go. I'll start sprinting. I'll just keep doing this. There we go. We're going to be finishing top three. Can we get past Rodriguez? Yes. We're going to finish second on Picon Blanco. Roglic takes the victory. He's going to win right here, right now. But Marton Dina, what a ride. And we're taking time on lots of people. So, perfect. Amazing start to La Vuelta for Primoz Roglic. We've got 23 seconds of deficit towards him. But we take time on Carapaz and so forth. Godlike. GC-wise, we're now fifth on 46 seconds of Roglic. Honestly, my aim here was to not lose too much time, man. We gain time on our competitors. Sure, not on Primoz, but let's be real. He's out of our reach on paper. So, I'm glad I took time on people like Caruso, Almeida, Enrique Mas, Lopez, Paulus. Because those are the riders we're going to be fighting with for that top five. So, let's try and keep this one up. And let's keep this going. Because right now, I'm really happy with where we are in GC. Flat stage then, 165 kilometers, all Dani time again. Let's hope we can do a bit better than last time and hopefully deliver a proper sprint here. 6k to go. I'm going to try and use my energy gel on Fetra already. I'm going to try and do this differently than the last time. Last time we used Fetra as lead out. This time around, I'm trying to avoid that because it seemed like he was spending too much energy on all Dani. So perhaps he is simply too strong acceleration wise to be the lead out. Hopefully Peang doesn't get in the way. I'm going to launch with Oldani right now on the left of Sevilla. There we go. Peterson, Mess Peterson versus Oldani. Oldani, it's going to be Peterson or actually Cobrelli comes around. Oh, a lot of people come around. Yeah, he went a bit too early. He was a bit uphill and I didn't notice that on the profile because I didn't look. <laughs> we got third on the sprint. If I knew that, I shouldn't have launched so early with Sevilla. That's a, a bummer. Bahrain being victorious, a podium for us in the sprint, so I'm pretty happy with that, knowing that Oldani is technically a worse sprinter than Chimulay and Colbrelli, so not that big of a deal. Quite a good result, to be honest, like, Colbrelli and Chimulay are better sprinters on paper, so I have no problem losing to them. Dion Smith, a bit surprising in fourth. Miss Peterson, he exploded the same way we did in the final kilometer, but at least we tried it properly. I just should have looked at the parkour beforehand. And so it begins. Yes, that is a Piotin Lord of the Rings quote. But anyway, we've got 183 kilometers with 160 kilometers of echelons, which I kind of don't like because they're way too OP in this game. So this could either go extremely good where we take minutes on people or extremely bad where I just completely fuck up something. But I hope to end in the middle because I don't want to exploit this in a playthrough like this. So I might play the stage very defensively. And hope that it just ends in a sprint or a small reduced bunch group finishing. But not just five riders of my own ahead of the peloton by five minutes. We're starting off with 13 wins. So luckily not that crazy yet. But it's exploding already. 25, 26. We got to get to the front with everybody ASAP. And it's already becoming troublesome. We have a break now trying to blow up the peloton. And if that happens then you're going to see gaps. Because just the breakaway is going to accidentally explode the group I think. So, the goal is simple, keep my riders at the front and hope that it doesn't really explode. Ooh, we are called behind in a second echelon. I don't think there's... Ooh, Roglic is up there. I can't do anything against this. Like, Steven's spacing like crazy. I'm in A1 setting up a 70 tempo right now, hoping that we can gradually move back up with Fetter. Oldani's domestique now for Dina for this stage, because survival is more important than a stage win today. But, my goodness, this is mad. Hopefully I can attach my wagon again towards the front group and settle that tempo down towards like 60 in the group so that I can at least be worthy with Fetter and the rest of the squad. Let's try and put the others on, maintain position and get Oldani to protect Dina for this. For now, Fetter can control the tempo on 60. Everybody's fighting for echelons. I'm just setting up my own four-man train here on the ride. I'm going to ride my own tempo and hope that I survive this stage. Otherwise, we're... We're getting wrecked everywhere and the tempo is going to settle down at some point because they can't just keep up this tempo. Here we go. Fetter brought us back. 42 people in this group again. Let's move towards the front of the group and set a tempo of 60 for a bit and hopefully nobody flies over us here. Last two kilometers. Not going to do a lead out properly. I can't sprint with a lead out. I don't have any. 
Aldani can try and start a sprint right now in the last corner. There we go. Cavendish versus Aldani. Cavendish comes around. Mark Cavendish going to take the stage. Aldani on the left. It's going to be Sam Bennett, perhaps. It's going to be close. I think Bennett takes it. Yes, Mark Cavendish second. We finish eighth on the stage. Kind of disappointing, but there are some gaps here. I don't see any big guns GC-wise really behind, though. So I guess it's a realistic outcome to the stage. So exactly what I was looking for. A bit too bad for O'Connor, though. He's one of the victims of today's stage. GC-wise, we are still in 6th position right now. 118. Why are we 6th and not 5th? Did someone take bonus seconds? How? Where did Dina lose time in GC? I swear we're on 49 seconds, right? And that's because of a game bug. In the previous stage, stage 4, we finished on a tiny hill. And because the developer who made this stage and the stage editor, it's a developer from the game devs themselves because this is a default game stage. Well, they filled in a certain input in the stage editor to make sure that it is qualified as a stage where gaps are going to be counted every single bloody millimeter on the screen because it's an uphill finish. But it's only 100 meters uphill. It was an uphill drag sprint. And despite that, the game sees it as a uphill mountain finish or something and thus counts the gaps between riders a lot. And every single gap that is like about half a centimeter on the screen between riders is then suddenly 20 seconds. And even though, according to the game, in the race, it was the entire peloton crossing the line, the game saw it as multiple groups following each other with 20 second gaps in between, as you can see. Six seconds here. Let me show you a picture of what those six seconds look like on the screen right now now you can see it that is two red lines and in between is the six seconds that's so minimal but it gets counted as a gap because of this mechanic behind the game it makes no sense and there have to be better ways of doing this i can't wrap my head around this as a consequence dina lost 53 seconds that is insane that is genuinely insane oh this hurts my head but i think the only thing we can do is just ignore it and continue onwards, otherwise I'll get angry at the game, and there's enough things about the game to get angry at already, so let's just skip it, be sad about it for two seconds, and stay positive, and let's try and get that time back. Next up's a hilly finish, it's a bit sketchy though, because since we had that time gap issue on stage four, I'm literally paranoid when it comes to this, so I'd like to aim to sprint with both Dina and the person we're aiming for, I think that Oldani could generally do well here, Fetcher as well, so... We'll have to think about it in the race, who has the best form. Eight kilometers to go. I've set up a train. I don't know what the plan is yet. I think that I'll try and aim to go with Aramburu with about oof, four kilometers to go, something like that. And then try and launch Fetter as my sprinter, Oldani and Dina as well at the same time. Yeah, that's, I think, the plan for now. And I'm going to try and launch with Sevilla in a bit right now in this corner. Fetter in the wheel. Let's try and launch with everybody the second I can. The second that Sivia is done for. That is right now. Let's try and go with Fetter. Come on. It's far from the finish line though. Peterson in my wheel. Fetter tries to come around. Roglic is going to win the stage. Dina. Dina, Dina, Dina. Oh, I need to lower my tempo with Fetter because Dina has the bonus seconds that he needs. So let's try and take that. There we go. Sorry, Fetter. Primoz Roglic wins the stage. I think Hamilton comes in second and... Marathon Dina in third, so that's all good stuff. The great thing about all of this is that we're still like 13 seconds of space too, so it's not actually that big of a deal that we lost that time, but did we gain time on people? Because I think Lopez was ahead of us in GC, if I remember correctly. Any time gaps? 24 seconds to the group with Lopez, yep. We gained time. That's good. That's some good karma after the fourth stage. And then there was one left today. We have one more race on the menu today. Gandia to Balcon de Alicante. And this is the first medium mountain stage, I'd call it. I wouldn't even call it a hill stage anymore. This is going to be the first proper mountainous challenge. He finishes a decent climb of like 10 kilometers. So I count it as a climb. And yeah, we're going to try and do our best. We've got Dina obviously still up there in GC. Still at a fifth spot a minute 30 down. I hope that I can stay in the top 10. If we can do that, then I'm pretty happy with how this first week is gone. 
Ooh, minus one on the day. That's not the greatest of starts, but luckily it only handles minus one on Barrier, Downhill and Prologue. So still a plus one on Mountain. That's good. Repairer looking good. That's all perfect for the team. I hope we can do well here. I think we've got decent days on the majority of our team, so it should be doable. Honestly, this is the kind of stage where we notice Dina's real weakness, and that is his secondaries. He doesn't have high secondaries. They're not above 70 for stamina and resistance, and this stage needs that because, as you can see, in Oldani and a Ropero have great secondaries with their daily form, plus 8, plus 7, and because of that, they've got more energy right now than Dina. While it honestly has been all climbing, it's been a lot of like consecutive climbing and therefore the resistance is just important and we're missing that on Dina. Hopefully it doesn't influence the outcome of the race here too much today. On to the second final climb then, the Puerto de Tibi. We've got tempo here by Serrano and it's not small tempo so I'm trying to keep myself in this group with Dina, Ropero, Oldani and Fetter. The rest can basically go because... They're not going to be of too much use from this point onwards. Just got to keep myself in this group, in this front peloton, and then everything should be all right, and I should be able to recover a bit before we get to the bottom of the final climb, I hope. We've got 5k to go. I'll just go 85 to the line. That should be fine, right? Why am I miscalculating something? Now that should be fine. Fetter helping out really well. The rest of the peloton having some struggles, to be honest. It looks like we're going to have a good day. We've got Kreiswijk already in red trouble. Kreiswijk is done for. How is he done for? What's his secondaries like? Well, they're not that high, but neither is Dina. Is having a really good stage today. 79 for the final two kilometers. We're still at the front of the group. Nobody's passed us yet. Nobody attacking. But we see people drop, though. It looks like we have a really good day compared to them, even though we've got a minus one. So they must be having a very shit day. Final kilometer incoming. Let's go 90 right now. NHL on Dina. We've got... Ropero left to help us. Ropero is better than Dina today. But I think we've got a really good day. I think we can end second here again. I hope. Come on, come on, come on. 99, 99. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's try and take seconds away with Ropero from Roglic. Come on, beat Roglic. Yes. Yes, we take seconds away with Ropero. We're such douchebags. <laughs> second place for Ropero. That's a really good finish for him. Dina in fourth, so weaker than his teammate this time around. But doesn't matter too much because... We basically, well, we took away bonus seconds from Roglic, but then we lost time to Roglic anyway. So in the end, it doesn't matter too much. I think we gained like one second from that move, so I guess we can be happy. Now it's time to investigate. We've got Nervias, Gegenhard. Where's Carapaz? Can I see that? Let's filter on Ineos. There we go. And we've got... He's not here. He withdrew? When? I didn't see that. Probably one of the last two stages where he... Abandoned? I don't know. Not in day three. Day four, he abandoned then, I guess. So this is what GC looks like at the end of today's episode. Roglic is currently in the lead of La Vuelta by a minute and one second on Gary and Thomas, who's riding for Ribble Welltide. I still can't wrap my head around it. Marton Dina in third place, 137 down. Damiano Caruso on 153 in fourth spot. Mas the Giro winner on 203 so it looks like Dina's doing much better than Fortunato in the Giro already and hopefully we can keep this up because it's looking really good like we've got some people losing time already we've got Lopez on 238 already we have Almeida on 405 for example that's all good for us next episode we're going to be taking on the next seven stage we've already done a walk through them at the start of this episode but the most important ones are quite simply Stage 9, Alto de Velefic, we've got a hill stage after that, and then, I don't know what the rest is to be honest by heart, a hill stage, another hill stage, a flat stage, and we finish off with another mountain stage on the Pico Viacas, so awesome stuff, I'm looking forward to riding these, and I hope I'll see you there, because right now, we're sitting nicely on the podium of La Velta, and I hope we can bring that Hungarian podium to Santiago de Compostela at the end of this Vuelta a España. Anyway, thanks for the support on the series so far. Really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this episode, tap that like button. If you didn't tell me what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.